For so many people, summer is their favorite time of year. They pack up the van, load up the kids, get on the highway, and head for vacation. So, for the customer who has a cross-country car trip planned, or even just a drive to a weekend cottage, a problem with the speed control system can be a very unwelcome visitor. That brings us to the subject of this month's Master Tech, speed control systems. This month, we're going to discuss the system used on Chrysler's domestic vehicles. We'll look at its components and system operation, and we'll discuss diagnostics and show you a sample problem using the MDS and data recorder. For a list of the vehicles that use the system discussed in this program, refer to this month's reference book. Speed control, also known as cruise control, is a system which senses vehicle speed and controls the throttle opening to maintain a selected driving speed. There are several different systems in use by automobile manufacturers, all of which provide speed control to the driver. The speed control system Chrysler uses on its domestic vehicles is vacuum operated and electronically controlled by the powertrain control module. Besides the PCM, there are several other components that work together to provide speed control to Chrysler's domestic vehicles. These include the speed control switches, the brake lamp switch, the park neutral switch or manual valve lever position sensor, the servo unit, and a vacuum reservoir. And on Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS, a cruise active light and a speed control relay are also part of the system. Of course, there will be slight differences in the system depending upon the vehicle. Component locations will vary. Some components will look different on different vehicles. And some vehicles use resistive multiplexing while others do not. Yet with each of these components, the basic function and purpose remains constant throughout Chrysler's domestic vehicle lines. If you have a question on a specific component location or wiring details, be sure to check the appropriate manual for the vehicle you're servicing. Now let's take a look at each of the components and how they're used, beginning with the speed control switches. On most models, the speed control switches are mounted on the steering wheel. The steering wheel mounted switches include an on-off button, a resume Excel button, and either a set coast or set decel button, depending on the vehicle. On some models, such as the Cherokee, the speed control switches are mounted on the turn signal stock. With stock mounted switches, a slide switch controls the off, on, and resume Excel functions, while a second switch located at the end of the stock controls the set and coast functions. Another component of the speed control system is the brake lamp switch, sometimes referred to as the stop lamp switch. This switch, located just above the brake pedal on all vehicles is used to deactivate the speed control system when the brake pedal is depressed. On Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS vehicles only, two more speed control components can be found in the passenger compartment. A cruise active light, located in the instrument cluster, illuminates when the speed control system is engaged. And a speed control relay, located in the junction block, provides battery voltage to the speed control servo unit. The other speed control system components are located in the engine compartment. First is the park neutral switch, also referred to as the neutral safety switch. Located on the housing of automatic transmissions, the park neutral switch, like the one we see on this minivan, works through the PCM to disengage speed control if the vehicle is in park or neutral. However, on Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS, the speed control system does not use a separate park neutral switch, but rather the manual valve lever position sensor sends the park neutral input to the PCM. Another component of the system is the vacuum reservoir. Here, vacuum is stored to ensure that a sufficient supply is available for speed control operation. Next is the heart of the system, the speed control servo unit. The servo unit contains a vacuum operated diaphragm and three solenoids. These solenoids, the vent, vacuum, and dump solenoids, 
control the amount of vacuum entering and leaving the servo diaphragm. A vacuum hose runs from the vacuum reservoir to the servo unit, connecting the servo unit with its vacuum supply. A speed control cable running from the servo unit to the throttle body cam pulls open or relaxes the throttle according to the amount of vacuum in the diaphragm. Finally, let's talk about the brain of the system, the powertrain control module. Like many other systems on the vehicle, the speed control system depends on the PCM as its controller. For speed control operation, the PCM uses the vehicle speed signal and inputs from the speed control switches, the brake lamp switch, and the park neutral switch or manual valve lever position sensor. The PCM sends outputs to the vacuum and vent solenoids in the servo unit. Also, on vehicles so equipped, the PCM will send outputs to the speed control relay and cruise active light. In our next section, we'll see how the PCM uses these inputs and outputs for vehicle speed control. But first, let's answer a master tech quiz question. Which speed control component is found on each of the speed control systems we've discussed? Steering wheel mounted switches, the brake lamp switch, or the speed control relay? The answer is the brake lamp switch. This component is used in the system to deactivate speed control when the brakes are applied. Now that we've seen the components of the system, let's look at how they all work together to provide speed control to the driver. Now, the first step in speed control operation is to enable the system with the on button. Pressing this button sends a signal to the PCM provided the ignition is in the run position. On those vehicles equipped with a speed control relay, it is energized by the PCM when the on button is pressed. On some models, such as the Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, Comanche, Wagoneer, Dakota, and full-size trucks and vans, the PCM uses a simple voltage, no voltage signal to determine the position of the on switch, as well as the set and resume switches. In other words, when the on switch is off, no voltage reaches pin 49 of the PCM. But when the switch is turned on, the PCM sees system voltage at pin 49. If the resume excel switch is pressed, a voltage signal is sent to pin 50 of the PCM. And if the set button is pressed, one of two things will occur. On the Cherokee, Comanche, and Wagoneer, pressing the set button supplies a voltage signal to pin 48 of the PCM. On the Grand Cherokee, Dakota, and full-size trucks and vans, pressing the set button interrupts a voltage signal to pin 48 of the PCM. On other vehicles, the PCM senses a certain multiplexed resistance signal from the switches. Multiplexing was discussed in the April Master Tech program. Do you recall what occurs in multiplex systems? A multiplexed system is one which enables more than one message to be sent on a single circuit. You may also recall that speed control is one of the three multiplexed systems on the Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS. Multiplexing of the speed control system allows each of the speed control switches to supply different resistance signal to the PCM through one wire by using resistors built into the switches. In this system, when the ignition is turned on, five volts are applied to pin 23 of the PCM and the system is grounded through a 22,600 ohm resistor. If any of the speed control switches except off are pressed, the circuit will be momentarily grounded through one of three resistors. The PCM senses the resistance signal to determine which switch has been pressed. For example, if the on switch is pressed, the circuit is grounded through a 680 ohm resistor. The PCM recognizes this resistance signal and enables the speed control system. If the off button is pressed, the circuit is momentarily grounded, but not through a resistor. The PCM recognizes the short to ground as the off signal. The switch signals are also multiplexed on minivans and front-wheel drive cars. However, 
the multiplexing used on these vehicles is slightly different than that on Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS. In this multiplexed system, voltage is not applied to the PCM unless the on button is pressed. When the on button is pressed, the on-off switch is closed and the circuit is supplied system voltage through a 6,230 ohm resistor. The PCM recognizes this as the on signal. Now, if, for example, the resume Excel button is pressed with the system on, the signal will momentarily pass through a 3300 ohm resistor in parallel with the first resistor. The PCM will sense this momentary change in resistance and determine that the resume Excel button has been selected. Voltage and resistance values for the switches can be checked using the scan tool and MDS. A list of these values for both multiplexed systems can be found in this month's reference book. And for wiring diagram details or switch resistance values, check the service manual for the vehicle you're servicing. So once the PCM sees the signal from the on switch, the desired speed can be set. Pressing and releasing the set button sends the appropriate multiplexed or non-multiplexed voltage signal to the PCM. From the set signal, the PCM recognizes that a vehicle's speed has been selected and stores it as the cruising speed. Before storing the cruising speed, the PCM checks the vehicle speed signal to determine that the chosen speed is between 35 and 85 miles per hour, since speed control can only operate within this range. If the selected cruising speed is within the 35 to 85 mile per hour range, it becomes the target for the speed control to maintain. To maintain this speed, the PCM operates the vacuum and vent solenoids of the servo unit. For example, in order to increase the throttle opening, such as when climbing a hill, the PCM will energize the vacuum solenoid, allowing more vacuum to enter the servo. At the same time, the PCM energizes the vent solenoid, which blocks vacuum from bleeding out of the servo. Conversely, when going downhill, the PCM will de-energize both the vacuum and vent solenoids. Now, this allows for vacuum to bleed from the diaphragm while blocking more vacuum from entering. The speed control cable will relax the throttle so the vehicle does not exceed the selected speed. These two examples illustrate extreme conditions. Most of the time, the PCM will not energize or de-energize the solenoids for any length of time. Instead, it continuously pulses the solenoids, helping to maintain a steady speed on varying road conditions. On Concord, Intrepid, Vision, New Yorker, and LHS, anytime the speed control system is operating, the PCM relays a message to the body control module over the C-squared-D bus. In turn, the body control module illuminates the cruise active light in the instrument cluster. There are two ways the speed control system can be manually disengaged without erasing the set speed from the PCM. First, the vehicle speed control system will be disengaged if the vehicle is shifted to neutral while speed control is active and the vehicle is moving. Now, this prevents the engine from over revving, which could occur if the speed control system is operated in neutral. The second, more common way to disengage speed control is by pressing on the brake pedal. During normal cruise operation, power is applied to the solenoids in the servo through the brake lamp switch as well as to pin 29 in the PCM. When the brakes are applied, power is interrupted at pin 29 of the PCM. The PCM then de-energizes the vent and vacuum solenoids, causing vacuum to bleed from the diaphragm while blocking more vacuum from entering. Pressing the brake pedal also tells the brake lamp switch to interrupt the power supply to the solenoids. Now this causes the dump solenoid to vent vacuum along with the de-energized vent solenoid, while the de-energized vacuum solenoid blocks vacuum. When the brake pedal is released, power is returned to the solenoids and the dump solenoid is reset. However, the vacuum and vent solenoids are not re-energized unless a new speed is selected using the set button or the resume excel button is pressed. Pressing and releasing the Resume Excel button after the cruise has been disengaged 
will send the PCM a signal to restore the previous set speed. By energizing the vacuum and vent solenoids, the PCM will bring the vehicle back up to cruising speed and continue to maintain this speed. The Excel function can be operated if the speed control is engaged by pressing and holding the Resume Excel button. The PCM will energize the vent and vacuum solenoids as long as the button is held. Now, this pulls the throttle open, causing the vehicle to accelerate. When the switch is released, the PCM stores the new speed as the set speed. And, of course, the new speed will be regulated in the same manner as the old set speed. And there is one more function called the tap-up function that can be activated using the Resume Excel button. Pressing and releasing the Resume Excel button while Cruise is already engaged will increase the speed setting by approximately two miles an hour. Now, this system can respond to multiple tap-ups. This information will allow you to answer question number three in your reference book. Go ahead and take a minute to mark down the correct answer. Next is the COAST or decel function, which is the opposite of the Excel function. Pressing and holding the set COAST or set decel button, depending upon the vehicle, causes the PCM to de-energize the vacuum and vent solenoids, reducing the throttle opening as long as the switch is held. Now, once again, the PCM stores the new reduced speed as the new set speed. Finally, pressing the off button will deactivate the speed control system and return throttle control to the driver. Deactivating the system in this manner will also clear any set speed stored in the PCM. The system can only be reactivated with the on button. Diagnosis of the speed control system should always begin with a visual inspection of the components. Check the fuse. Look for any loose electrical connections. Check that the speed control cable is securely attached and inspect the vacuum hoses for cracks or loose connections. Poor connections may be misdiagnosed as a component malfunction or could cause intermittent malfunctions that are difficult to diagnose. Also be sure that the vacuum check valve is in the correct position. The word vac on the valve must point toward the vacuum source. Now, once you've completed the visual inspection and secured any loose connections, your next step is to take the vehicle for a test drive to verify speed control malfunction. After determining that the speed control system is operating improperly, there are a couple of different ways you may proceed. If the scan tool or MDS is not available, it is possible to check fault codes using the check engine light and to perform some diagnostic tests using a volt ohm meter. Follow the steps outlined in your service manual if this option is chosen. However, if the scan tool or MDS is available, you should continue your diagnosis using one of these. Both the scan tool and MDS allow you to check for any speed control system diagnostic trouble codes. They also provide the added advantage of being able to check for intermittent faults by monitoring the speed control sensors and switches during a test drive. And in case of intermittent cutouts, the scan tool and MDS can display a speed control denied message, which indicates one of eight possible reasons for speed control being denied. It can also display a speed control cutout message, which will give you the reason that speed control was last electronically disengaged. If you were just starting a test drive, the cutout message would read, key off indicating that speed control was last disengaged by turning the ignition off and all previous speed control information was erased from the memory of the PCM. Then, during your test drive, you may see, for example, the message RPM speed, which would tell you that speed control was disengaged because of a 10 mile an hour increase or decrease in speed per second, possibly indicating a faulty vehicle speed signal. The steps for checking intermittent faults and an explanation of the speed control denied message for the scan tool can be found in the Powertrain Diagnostic Procedures Manual. Speed control denied and cutout messages can also be found in this month's reference book. You'll need this information to answer one of the quiz questions in the reference book. 
And don't forget to check for any speed control TSBs like TSB 8793 Revision A and TSB 8993. A quick check of any relevant bulletins may save a lot of time spent in diagnosis. In our next section, Mike, our technician, is going to show you a sample problem using the MDS for speed control diagnosis. But before we move on, let's answer another Master Tech quiz question. When beginning a test drive, the speed control cutout message you would most likely see is on off, speed control off, or key off. The answer is key off. This message indicates speed control was last disengaged by turning the ignition off and any old speed control information was erased from the memory of the PCM. The day before his summer vacation, a customer came in complaining that his speed control system was not operating properly. He said it intermittently cut out almost every time he used the speed control. As mentioned earlier, our first step was to perform a visual inspection. Our next step was to take the vehicle for a test drive, where we verified the customer's complaint by duplicating the intermittent cutout. Next, we looked for speed control TSBs. We found that the subject of TSB 8993 was intermittent speed control operation because of faulty servo units and TCMs. However, a quick comparison of part numbers revealed that the servo and TCM on this vehicle were not suspect. So then we had to decide whether to use the scan tool or MDS for diagnosis. Since the MDS was available, we chose it. After hooking up the vehicle to the MDS, we proceeded to engine diagnostics, where the MDS read all the faults on the vehicle. In this case, there were none. So we continued our diagnostics by choosing option three, or speed control system tests. Then we followed the MDS through a series of speed control system tests. In this case, however, there were no problems found, and the MDS sent us back to the diagnostic test menu. At this point, we decided to try the data recorder. It would enable us to capture vehicle events on a test drive, and compare sensor and switch information to each other at the time of the problem. This information would help isolate an intermittent cutout, which seemed to be the problem. So how did we set up the scan tool for data recording? Simple. First, we returned to the diagnostic main menu and selected data recorder functions. Then, after we verified the vehicle diagnostic information, the MDS sent us to the data recorder main menu. From this menu, we selected quick setup to record vehicle shown above to change the scan tool into the data recorder. When the MDS was finished downloading the information, it instructed us to disconnect the data recorder from the MDS and we were ready for another test drive. On this test drive, we operated the speed control and waited for it to disengage without our command. Of course, since this was an intermittent fault, it took a while to occur. But when it did, we captured the event using the data recorder. After the event was stored in the data recorder, we returned to the shop. When doing data recordings, it's a good idea to try and capture more than one event if possible. If you need help using the data recorder for capturing events, See your MDS user's manual. The next step in our problem was to load the information from the test drive into the MDS. After selecting Get Vehicle Events, we were instructed to connect the scan tool to the MDS. Then, when the MDS was through transferring the information from the data recorder, we were ready to view the data collected on the test drive. We selected display all vehicle events from the data recorder main menu and chose the event we wanted to view. At this point, the MDS displayed the six standard data recorder graphs, but we wanted to look at information which would help us find a speed control cutout. So we switched the graphs to vehicle speed sensor, speed control set speed, and several speed control switches. And this is what we saw. 
Can you find the problem? Remember, we did not press the off button. At this point on the graph, we noticed that the speed control status changed from allowed to denied. This is also the point where the speed control on switch signal changed to off, indicating a lack of voltage at the PCM at the time the problem occurred. Checking the other graphs, we saw that everything else seemed normal. The set, resume, and brake lamp switches were all released. The vacuum and bent solenoids seemed to be operating properly. And there were no spikes in the speed sensor graph, such as the one we see here, which might indicate a bad speed sensor signal. From this information, we concluded it must be the on-off switch or its wiring causing the intermittent problem. Our next step was to disconnect the speed control switch to check for any damaged or pushed out terminals. In this case, we didn't find any. So we wiggled the switch connector, hoping to simulate whatever was causing the intermittent fault. Then we returned to the diagnostic test menu to try the speed control tests again. This time, when the MDS asked us to press the speed control on button, the appropriate voltage never reached the PCM, just like in our data recording. Next, the MDS asked us to probe the speed control fuse and then to back probe the yellow and red ignition 12 volt feed wire. When the MDS saw the appropriate voltages, it instructed us to turn the ignition off and disconnect the train control module. Then, with the ignition back on, we probed the speed control mode select sense circuit at both the speed control switch and at cavity 23 of the PCM. Finally, the MDS was able to identify our problem. We were instructed to replace the speed control switch. After the diagnosis was completed and the new speed control switch in place, we verified the repair using the MDS. And, of course, we took the vehicle for one more test drive just to make sure everything was working properly. If you find that you're having problems reading the MDS graphs, you may want to establish benchmarks to use as a comparison. When a new vehicle comes in, take it for a test drive. Using the data recorder, record several events and take readings for all the sensors and switches under normal conditions. That way you can see what the graphs and values are supposed to look like and it may be easier to pick out abnormalities. Now don't forget, if you're still having problems, the MDS hotline team is always there to help. Thanks, Mike. Sure, Greg. Well, before we conclude for this month, we want to answer an open-end question submitted to us by Dan Alley from Chuck Patterson Dodge in Chico, California. Now he asks, are there back issues of the Master Tech Training booklets available? If so, how do I order them, and how much are they? Well, Dan isn't the only one who has written or called us with this question. So just to let you know, back issues of Master Tech and Video Tech videos, reference books, and binders are available through the Technical Training and Service Publications Catalog. Each dealership is mailed this publication through Compaq, or to obtain a free catalog, call 1-800-626-1523. Costs will vary according to the year of release. Well, that's it for another Master Tech. We'll see you next month when our topic will be new model highlights. Bye for now.